Hey folks, it's me and me, and today I'm going to talk about vegetarianism. I am a vegetarian. I'm going to talk about how long I've been one, why I became one, uh, my journey so far, and where I'm at at this point, and give you a few tips of anyone who's curious about it or is interested in becoming one to kind of help you along your journey or start your journey. My friend Ty um, from LA, she started her vegetarian journey in 2010. And for me, becoming a vegetarian was not anywhere in my psyche. It was like, you're yeah, right, I'm about to go bust down on these chicken wings. So it wasn't something that I was looking to do anytime in the near future. So I moved out of LA and um, she continued her journey. I then visited LA um, for like a day, a couple of days or a day, and she told me about the fat, sick, and nearly dead uh, juice fast. And I went back home, I purchased an Omega juicer, I did a lot of research, and I attempted it. And I did it for about three days. And I will say that I did see a difference, I felt different, I really started to um, see and be one with nature in a different way that I had never experienced before in just three days and not everyone will understand what I what I mean uh, when I say that but um, those of you who are vegetarians or vegans probably will understand so um, but it didn't last okay I was hungry and I was at work so I was fasting <laughs> while working and sitting at a desk all day and I was just like like this is just and then what made it worse is the, the place I was working at the time they had the best like <laughs> they had the best cafeteria like it was a restaurant like literally it was a restaurant it was a cafe and they're all oh, so good it was like food made to order you would order it and they would make it all oh, was so good so that that didn't fast sick and nearly dead was a wrap okay but then I came to Korea okay so I got to Korea last year and I there's a place here called um, Loteria, Loteria, Loteria or Loteria, and um, I ate a chicken sandwich, fries, and a drink, like a regular combo. It's kind of like their version of McDonald's, like a fast food place. Yeah, homegirl was um, in the bathroom and in the bed, and I thought my life was over. I got food poisoning. And I had had food poisoning before from Jack in the Box, okay? Keep that in mind. For you in the States who eat Jack in the Box, I got food poisoning from Jack in the Box from some stuffed jalapenos. This food poisoning out here, I thought I was dead. Like, I was literally saying all the things that I wanted people to know. Like, <laughs> you know, but I was like, I, ho I hope he knows I really love him and all that. Because I really, I really thought I was going to die. Like... I really thought I was gonna die it was that bad and I went through the whole night like that because I didn't want to wake my co-teacher and have her take me to the hospital I had I waited as long as I could I waited till like 6 a.m. 6 or 7 a.m. and I called her and I was like I don't feel good I gotta go to the hospital you know um, got to the hospital I had to get a water drip like I was so I couldn't hold it I didn't have any water in my body pretty much like and you know our bodies are like 90 some percent water or what have you and I probably had like 15% water like it was no joke I, I it was it was horrible I had to get a water drip um, I had to sleep there I was sleep there for like three four hours um, just to regain some strength they gave me a shot like it was it was bad like I hadn't experienced that type of um, sickness due to any food that fast that um, intense ever that was the experience that I was like, okay, hmm, all right, let's look at this. So then fast forward to, what was that, December. Um, I mentioned in my <laughs> beauty haul video that um, the uh, teacher's workshops are literally like trips, like field trips where they drink on boats and um, go to shopping outlets. However, during the trip, um, you know, we take pictures and I took pictures at a temple. We went to a temple and afterwards I was looking at my face in the picture and something didn't seem right. 
and diabetes and all of that runs in my family has ran in my family excuse me because it's, it's not running there no more but um it has ran in my family and um i was looking at my face in that picture and i was like something is not right like something in me just knew like that's not you you not you're not supposed to look like that you know my face was like droopy and I know that's a sign like that is a sign of diabetes like that is it okay so it was like it just like you can see it the, the, in the picture I zoomed in because I it's something caught my eye and I zoomed in and I was like oh no and that like literally that picture scared the shit out of me I am only 28 years old why do I look like that like that is a hot mess like no what so, um, that picture was my wake up call. It was time to get my shit together because, uh, no ma'am, like, <laughs> no ma'am, I'm, I'm too damn young. I got, I have too much stuff to do and too much stuff to experience as Mia. This is not no ma'am. So I had to make a change. And then also too, um, I will throw this in. I came across um, some videos from a man who's on YouTube and he sometimes calls himself Uncle P. So I'll leave it at that. And um, I started watching his videos and a lot of them, his mantra is basically get back to nature. That was the confirmation that I needed on top of the photo that I saw of myself to take shit seriously and take matters into my own hands and to get healthy. So during my desk warming uh, vacation, which if you come to Korea or you've been here, you already know about that. Um, I actually fasted. I was the only one in the office for two weeks, which I really enjoyed. Most people complain, but I really liked it um, because it allowed me to research and just be by myself and do a lot of thinking. And um, I pretty much fasted for a long time, well, I'd say maybe a week and a half of those whole two weeks. I remember one day I ate like a carrot. Like <laughs> I ate a carrot, I dipped it in some dressing and that was it and I was fine. The funny thing was while I was fasting during that time, like I felt fine. I wasn't, I didn't feel like I was gonna pass out or I was lacking energy or anything like that. It was just like, okay, like, okay. From that, I just kept going. I felt I started to feel different. Um, of course, I started to lose some weight. Um, and it was just, I could see and feel the changes. And, you know, my face hadn't fully got rid of the droop because that's really like, that's really what did it for me. I was like, I'm, I'm walking around here looking like droop, 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 droop. No. So, um, you know, I kept kept at it. I walked to school some days, and I passed by two dogs. And I was t I read or heard this somewhere. That they said, you know, once you stop eating dead flesh, uh, the animals will not bark at you. They will not treat you as bad as they had been when you were eating, eating animals. So I was like, okay, yeah, let's see. When I tell you both of these dogs no longer bark at me, they can tell when I'm coming and they'll be like alert and they'll start like the whimpering situation. Like they want to like be pet, like they want me to pet them and they want me to love them straight up. I'm not playing with you. Like I, I, it sounds funny, but I'm not playing. Like I'm really not playing. So yeah, so those are the reasons. Um, I still fast from time to time. Last weekend I actually did a speaking and eating fast. Uh, but I will say if you fast, please make sure that you are totally hydrated. Homegirl over here wanted to, um, be all up in the Pisces situation of dreaming and just stayed in the bed all day and only got up twice and didn't drink no water and almost passed out on Monday morning. So uh, please make sure you are hydrated when you choose to fast. That is key, key, key. Um, being a vegetarian has really allowed me to, I think, has catapulted me uh, more so than if not into my spirituality in my mental health, physical health, emotional health. Uh, I feel much more stable. I feel more much pu put together. Um, I know who what's going on. And it's funny because um, all of this, and it's, it's all interconnected, but 
keep in mind, I'm going through um, transitioning to vegetarian. Uh, well, now I am a vegetarian. I'm going through my Saturn return and I'm experiencing the shift. So I got three things going on at one time that it's off the chain. Like, like this time is off the chain. Like I will always, I will always remember this like, yo, 2013, <laughs> off the chain, okay? But it's, it's really allowed me to get in touch. And um, it's a beautiful thing. I'm, it's so exciting. I'm so happy about it. Uh, it's great. I, it's great. It really is great. I will, <laughs> in one of my other videos, uh, you can see how I get to school when I walk to school. And uh, as you see, I walk across a river. The other day, me and my co-teacher were walking home and one of the fishermen caught a fish. And it kind of made me really sad. Like, it was a big fish. Everybody was happy. Oh, fish, fish. Because, you know, they get down on the meat out here. Um, but I was like, you know, he caught the fish and the fish was squirming, trying to breathe, and the fish was suffocating. And I was like that's not okay like I felt really bad but seeing that fish get caught and feeling what I did it really sparked a metaphor so the metaphor is how does a fish get hooked how does a fish get hooked ultimately to their death and um, a fish gets hooked by the pursuit of food. So a fish ultimately and willingly sees the food worm dangling and sometimes it's fake a fake worm. Keep that in mind. It's not even real. It's not real food. It's a fake worm. It sees the fish dangling on the hook. Doesn't see the hook. It sees the, the facade, the illusion of food. It goes and tries to eat the food because it thinks it's gonna help it survive. And it gets hooked and it's brought to its death. Yes, I'm on my way to being a vegan. Um, like I said, out here, the resources are a tad bit uh, limited and challenging because of just the cultural differences and the, the cultural values. Um, I have not met one vegetarian Korean. Like the people I know out here, they're like, no, no, we're not giving up meat. We love meat. We're, meat is going down all the time. I don't understand how you, they're looking at me like, I don't understand how you do it. Like, what are you doing that for? You know, it's just a personal preference. It's the health and it's, um, I'm really coming from a spiritual place when I'm choosing to continue along the path to be vegan because I don't, I don't want to consume anything from another animal. Like, no ma'am, like that's, <laughs> that's, that's not, that's just not where I'm at anymore. So, um, I do have plans on, by the end of this year, I will be a vegan. So, believe that. Um, a quick little story. Okay, Thursday and Friday, I went to eat with my co-teachers in the cafeteria. I usually don't eat with them anymore. Uh, because the amounts of rice and meats and everything but I went and I just you know selected what I wanted to eat and the lunch lady saw me when I first got to Korea where I was probably like 25 25 pounds lighter than I am now we're sitting there eating on Friday and the head lunch lady comes over and she you know they're talking to Korea and she's like oh blah, blah, and she's looking at me and I could tell it's about me I can't understand it but I could tell it's about me and I can tell by my co-teachers' reactions, like, it's not really the best thing. Like, it's, they were like, oh, and they were kind of like trying to stay in their food. So, of course, I'm looking at only like, what she said? And she said, oh, um, the lunch ladies um, didn't know it was you. They didn't think it was you. They were confused. So, they asked her, is that Mia? And she said, yeah, and, and they didn't recognize you because you look so much better. So I was like, oh, okay. And so I, I looked down at my, at my tray and I was like, well, like, I couldn't even be, I wasn't even mad at it. Like it, 
it was it was so much truth behind it, but at the same time, it was kind of like, well, damn, like, <laughs> damn, like, was it that bad? <laughs> I guess it was. So, um, <laughs> you know, that's my short story of the drastic effects of me becoming a vegetarian. <laughs> A few steps that I've put together that have helped me and along my journey and towards becoming a vegetarian, um, it really is day by day. You really have to take it day by day. I had days where I was like, yo, when I first started, I, I had purchased um, some pork, which when I lived in the States, I didn't eat any pork. I got to Korea and it was some gopsal was going down. Every time, like every time I went out and I started eating pork and that's, that's really was like, you don't even eat pork, what are you doing? So, you know, I bought some pork, it was, in the, it was in the freezer and I was so tempted to cook it. I was hungry, I didn't have any food, but I just said, nope, and I threw it away. So, um, you know, you really have to take it day by day when you first start. Now, after you get used to it, like three months, you're like, oh no, no, I'm not going back, you know, because you see the results, you feel better, and you just know consciously that this, this is a better way to, to live. And to Cut out things with advertisements. Um, and that might be fasting from TV, that might be fasting from radio, magazines, anything, even sometimes um, online, certain sites will have food advertisements for fast food. And, you know, restaurants, coupons here. Uh, you have to kind of uh, remove yourself to help you achieve your goal. Um, some people can do it still with seeing the advertisements, but if you need a lot of help and encouragement, that might be something that you need to cut out. Some people need to find an accountable partner. Uh, if you have a friend, cousin, aunt, whoever, who also is interested in it and is curious about it, make a pact between the two of you and check in with each other and, and encourage each other to not do the meat. To just, you know, to find recipes and videos and tutorials. Um, that will help you stay along the path because once you once you cross the uh, Threshold I really will say of maybe three months two to three months depending uh, You you won't need that partner anymore. You will be your own partner Oh, if you are a social person or if you have gatherings at your house or you go over places You can't go out with eating meat eaters like you you can't Somebody say, oh, I'm having, you know, um, a get together, I'm having a barbecue, I'm having a cookout. You, you, you can't kick it with them. Um, maybe you can if you have a lot of willpower. If you have all the willpower in the world, go on, go on, have fun. But if you know you don't and you're at a point in the process where it's really tough for you, do not tempt yourself like that. Like... Be true to yourself and be true to your goal. Do not tempt yourself. And if you have to pause on going out with the meat eaters until you can gain, you know, like your strength and your will to be able to sit there next to them while they're eating their food and you do your thing, then that then by all, by all means. But until you reach that point, just be true to yourself and be true. And lastly, I had to do this uh, on my own channel. And it wasn't just around food. It was around a, a lot of reasons. But you might need to change your subscriptions on YouTube. You might be following someone who is a chef and they cook pork, chicken, beef, all the things, you know. And this is not for everyone. This is my story of how I'm becoming how I became a vegetarian, how I'm on my way to becoming a vegan. And this is to help people who are curious and want to do it. If you're watching this and, and you eat meat, then by all means, do you. I am not here to try to turn anybody over or try to persuade anybody to do anything that they do not want to do. That's not what this video is about. But I am sharing the information that I have experienced and learned with people who might come across it who want to know some information. So you may need to change your subscriptions and you may need to gain some subscriptions that will help you along your path. Check out Chef Aki, A-H-K-I, chefaki.com. She has recipes, she has a cleanse, um, essence of vitality cleanse. You can see people's reactions uh, through their videos on YouTube taking it. 
but um, she is a, a great resource. Also, Mama Rosa here on YouTube, she's now a vegan again, and she's doing a lot of tutorials from um, barbecue sauce to brown sugar, everything. And then also, Hey Friend Hey, um, her blog, as well as her YouTube channel. So um, I hope this helps someone, and if you are headed towards becoming a vegetarian or starting your journey, or in your journey, I send lots of success to you and lots of help your way. So thanks for watching and I'll see you later. Bye.